In the previous video, we saw how to create and delete objects in Blender, and now we are going to continue with basic transformation concepts. Remember that if you are enjoying this series and want to go deeper, I invite you to take a look at my complete Blender course for beginners. You have the link in the video description. And now, let's go to the next level. In Blender, we have three basic types of transformations. There is Move, Rotate, and Scale. Move is simply to move an object in our three-dimensional space, and we can do that with the G key. With the G key, we move an object that we have selected. To rotate, we press the R key, and it rotates it from the point where we have the camera, in this way. And to scale, we press the S key. In this way, we change the size of our object. The transformations can be done with the shortcuts, or we can also do it from this panel, where these tools are. Here, we can move it from a specific axis. We can rotate. Here, we have the manipulators of the different axes or the camera axis. And scale. Here, I can scale it in specific axes or scale it in all axes. And we also have the transform button where we get the manipulators of the three types of manipulation. We can move, rotate, and scale using the manipulators that appear here. My recommendation, however, is that you learn the shortcuts because they are very simple, and since we are going to use them so much, it is much more practical than coming here and selecting a button. Now, let's see how we can do the transformations on a specific axis, which is by pressing the axis key after the transform key. So, if I press G to move it, and I want to move it only on the Y axis, I press the Y key, and we move it only forward and backward. I can move it in the X axis and Z axis, respectively. Or, I can also lock one of these axes, so here, I'm going to move it, and I'm going to lock the Z axis by pressing Shift-Z. I press Shift-Z, and we lock the Z axis. Then, it moves in the Y axis in X axis simultaneously. I can lock X axis, for example, or lock the Y axis by pressing G and Shift-Y. And that works for all transformation types. If I press the R and X key, the object rotates using the X axis as the center of rotation. I can use Y to rotate it on the Y axis or Z. The rotation also has an extra option, which is a free rotation. If I press R twice quickly, I can rotate freely. Likewise, for the scale, the same concepts work. If I press S and X, I will scale only on the X axis. If I press S and Y on the Y axis. Or in the Z axis. Or we can also lock an axis. I'm going to scale it and press Shift Z to scale it in all axes except the Z axis. There is also another concept that applies to the transformation, which is the pivot point. Pivot point can be found in this menu, and it tells us from where the transformation is going to be done. Here, I have these two objects, and by default, they come in median point. So if I rotate it, it will rotate it using as an axis the midpoint between these two objects. If I scale it, the same thing happens. You can see that the center of the transformation is between the two objects. We have other options, for example, 3D cursor. If I put the cursor here and scale, the objects will be scaled using that 3D cursor as the axis. The same for rotation. We have another option, which is active element. And this active element is the last one that we have selected, in this case, this one here, that is yellow. I'm going to select from the right and then from the left, and this one that I have left in yellow is the last one that I selected, and it will be the active element. So here, it will function as the axis of the transformation. If I select these objects, and I get the light yellow that was the last one I selected, that will be the axis of the transformation. And finally, we have individual origins. So, in this case, each object will be transformed using its origin as the axis of the transformation. 
So with these concepts that we have seen, we can transform our objects depending on the needs that we have. I'll leave you with an image of the shortcuts we used in this session.